Hi everyone, it's Sam from SiteMate. In this video, we're going to look at the lists section inside of Dash Pivot. And it's where you can set up standardized lists which uh, your form templates can refer to. So the most common examples are things like lists of employees, contractors, plant and equipment, cost codes, work activities, assets, things like that. Anything where you've got a standardized set of values that you want to refer to, maybe in a drop down menu inside one of your form templates. Um, so the lists section, uh, when you create a list, it has a one-to-many relationship with your form templates, which means that multiple templates can reference the same list or multiple fields uh, within a single template can refer to the same list. So it means that it eliminates a lot of manual uh, work in sort of recreating the list every time you create a new template uh, or it, each time you add a new field in, in the same template. Um, so using the list section, it helps you to sort of achieve some standardization for how you capture information. It's faster and it uh, can reduce human error when you're entering data because you're selecting a value from a drop-down list rather than typing something out. Um, and it also helps with your filtering inside the analytics section and in the registers. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can create a list inside of the list section. Uh, we're going to look at how we can then link that to a template and then we'll look at some examples of how this actually helps us in the register view and the analytics section. Um, so the first thing to note is that the list section is actually uh, only available within the project folders. So there's within each of these project folders, there's a section called lists, which is what we see here. Uh, but in the home folder, we also have a section called our list library. Now, the difference is that if we set up a list in our list library, we can we can link that list, let's say, of employees to any of our form templates that are also in our home folder, in our template library. Um, if we set up uh, a list in any of these project folders, we can only refer to that list from within any of the team folders that sort of sit within that. So if we set up a uh, a list in this project here, which is called 123 Smith Street, uh, we can only refer to that list in uh, this site team uh, folder that we have within that project folder. So this will all become very clear in uh, just a moment, but just wanted to make a note of that because that's quite important. That determines where you'll actually set up your uh, list to begin with. Uh, if, if you think that if, if it's something like a list of employees, uh, or list of subcontractors, uh, you're better off setting up that list in your home folder in the list library. Uh, but if that list is only going to apl be applicable to some of the team folders within that specific project, then you're better off setting it up uh, within that uh, project folder. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to go to this project folder here called 123 Smith Street. We're going to go to the lists section. And we don't actually have any lists set up so far. Um, so we need to go ahead and create a new one. So as the first step, we just click add list and we need to give it a name. In this case, we're just going to call it employees. And once we've created our list, you'll see that there's a column called items. This is basically where we enter in all of the different values that we want to populate so that if we want to use this list in a drop down menu, basically all of the list items that we enter here will show up in that drop down menu. Um, so the way to do that, we just click this add item button on the right hand side. We get a little box and we can type in some names. So I'm just going to type in John, Sarah, uh, James, Bob, and Amy. Now you notice that everything uh, is automatically organized alphabetically. So this is really handy, helps us find things later on. Um, there is also an, a way to import a list if you have a CSV file. Uh, from either exported from Excel or another system, you can just import that and it will automatically generate all of the uh, list items for you, save you a lot of time. Uh, but once you've got the list items in here, there's a few things you can do. Uh, the main thing is adding list properties. Uh, now we have a separate video that goes into detail about the different property types, but just as one example, uh, if we wanted to track uh, each of these people's uh, email addresses, we can type that in and select the text property. And what that does is it just adds an extra column. So these are like values that are then, or properties that are uh, attached to each of these list items. So we could then put in, you know, amy at company.com. 
you know, and typically like just like if you'd have a, a register uh, in Excel where you'd have a list of all of your employees and then you'd have their contact details, their license expiries, things like that. Um, that's what the properties are for. You can track all of the same information uh, inside of Dash Pivot online. And once we've got this list set up, uh, it's basically ready to go. We can start to refer to this list from any templates that we build within this team folder underneath that uh, project folder. So uh, just to be clear, if we went to any of these other team folders that are underneath other project folders, uh, we wouldn't be able to, to refer to the list that we've just created. It's only available um, to any of the uh, team folders underneath that project folder. So let's go to this site team and we're going to head to the template section and we're going to link our list that we've just created uh, to our daily diary template. Uh, but before we do that, I want to show you the difference that setting up a list will make. So if we go in and add a new form, we're going to see it's a very straightforward daily diary. We have a date, we have weather, we have a, a simple summary and you can see it's a required field so we can just type something in. But then when we get to these tables here, this is where I want to show you how we can use the list, uh, the list that we've just set up. So at the moment, we have to manually type in someone's name every time we want to uh, add in a new row. Um, there's no drop down menu here. Um, what we want to do is using our list, we want to set this up so that we don't have to type out the person's name every time. And keep in mind, this applies for you know, in this case, it's a it's a, a table recording labor. But if we have a table for recording plant and equipment hours, uh, like we have here, we might want to have a drop down for the vehicles and the equipment and the pieces of plant that we have that we're using uh, on our project or with our team. What we're going to do is we're going to link that list of employees uh, to this uh, daily diary template and to this field specifically. And then we'll come back and we'll create a new form and we'll see what a difference uh, it can it can make by having that list linked. So let's exit out of here. We won't need to save anything. Let's click uh, this button, Edit Template. So now we're in the Template Editor. And I'd just like to point out, I mean, we've got our, our table here, which is set up as a, a default table, and we've got our, uh, our different columns. And you can see that the first column is set to be a text cell. Uh, we can use the list in two ways. We can use it as a list cell, like we see here, but we can also use it uh, with a list field. So I'll show you what I mean. So let me just drag in a list field. So this is the list field, and this, we're going to change it to be a list cell, which is inside the table. So the options are the same. So we can link to a list, which is this option. So we can select our list of employees. And you can see that we have a couple of different options, uh, basically all the values that we entered before, they all show up here. And we can do the same inside of the table. So let's link it to our list of employees. And this is different to manually typing out a list. Um, the, the, the times where you'd use the manually typed option is if the list that you're about to populate is only ever gonna be used within this one template, in this one field. As soon as you want to, let's say, as an example, let's say that we had Bob, James, Sarah. It's great that we've populated these values, but if we want to use these same values in this cell or in any other template somewhere else, uh, th these list items are, are not accessible. Um, so that's a problem for us. So we, that's why we'd want to use that dedicated list section to create a standardized list that we can refer to from many different templates and many different fields within each of our templates. So we're going to switch it back to be linked to the list and uh, basically any of the lists that you set up, whether it's employees, subcontractors, uh, cost codes, um, assets, things like that, they'll all show up here and you just pick the right list and uh, away you go. Uh, in this particular case, we don't actually need this, uh, this list field here, so I'm going to delete that. I just wanted to show you that the list field is also available. That's a, another way that you can use the list that we've just made. Um, but then, yeah, all we've done is we've set this cell in this table, in this column, to be a list uh, list cell, and we've linked it to our employees list. So we're ready to go. We just click Save. 
the template has been updated and now if we go and add a form the diary comes up again and if we scroll down to the table you can see that instead of it being uh, a text field like this where we'd have to type in someone's name uh, we can actually just pick the value from the drop down list so we can just select John's name and then we can add a new row and click uh, Amy's name and so on and so forth and so this is way faster uh, for filling out your forms and it standardizes the way that the information is captured you're not going to get any typos or any uh, you know human error when entering the data so there's a lot of benefits to setting up the list in this way and utilizing it across as many templates as you uh, as required so in this case we might use our list of employees in our daily diary template but if we have a template for timesheets or inspections or pre-starts where we want to select uh, someone's name from a drop-down list we don't have to recreate the list it's already in dash pivot we can just refer to it and it'll work in the same way now I want to show you how this works over time so I have an example here of a uh, daily diary where we have lots of records that have already been filled out and this template is utilizing the list field in a table for tracking labor so uh, how this works is if we switch to our register view this is where we get uh, sort of like an excel view where we've got a row for each of our forms and we've got columns for each of the fields that are on those forms uh, well, we've got some of our tables. So you can see here, we've got a table for uh, labor. So you can see we've got a list of uh, names here that have been entered. Uh, what's good about this is that because the information is being recorded as a list, uh, we can actually apply some filters. So you see the columns that are set up as lists have a filter option on them. Other fields uh, such as uh, formulas or uh, number uh, don't have the filter option. Um, so having it uh, as a list field actually helps us out because we can filter by those uh, by those values. So if we click on the little filter icon, we can click someone's name from the drop-down list. I'm going to select Daniel, apply the filter. And now you can see that it's only returned the forms where Daniel has been selected inside of that uh, diary. So if we wanted to only look for the forms where uh, Daniel was recorded having been working that day, uh, it's a really fast way of uh, finding out that information. So this is a way that the list cell and list field uh, can actually help us find information quite quickly. Um, and the other way that it helps is in our analytics. So let's go and take a look at some charts. Here you can see we've got some dashboards already set up. We've got a dashboard for labor. Let's click on that one. We've got a couple of charts already set up. Uh, and once they've loaded, let's click on this one for tracking daily hours. So this is just uh, extracting the information from all of those daily diaries that we were looking at just before. You can see that this chart is showing us the total number of hours uh, for each day uh, plotted over time. Uh, the uh, information is coming or is sourced from the uh, diary template that we have and it's coming from this field and this cell uh, but then what we've done is we're actually breaking down the information by the name uh, column which is using our list of employees so that's why we're seeing the different colors and you can see the legend here uh, the different colors represent the different people that we had in that list. So uh, because the list is capturing the information in that standardized way, we can then filter and break down our information by using that list. Um, so it's very handy. I'll just show you down the bottom here as well. We have a, a section for applying filters. Let's say we only wanted to look at the hours that were worked by uh, Chris. So we can filter by the name column which was using our employees list and we can select a value from that list so in this case it's Chris and now we're only looking at the hours that Chris uh, was working uh, over this time period so as you can see it's quite powerful uh, using the list feature to standardize the way that you're capturing information and then uh, it helps in the way that you uh, can find and then analyze that information that you store inside of Dash Pivot. 
Um, so if you'd like to learn more about uh, how to use Dash Pivot, the different use cases and features that we have available, feel free to head to the tutorial section on the Dash Pivot website. Uh, we also have live chat down the bottom here if you get stuck or have a specific question for our team. Uh, the live chat is also available in the mobile app. So I hope this has been useful and thanks for watching.